Fish River Canoe Marathon. Two days of testing canoeing through the Claim Karoo using a ribbon of humping irrigation water from Grass Ridge Dam into the friendly town of Cranach. It's 82 kilometers that brings out the best in an athlete. It tests resolve and fitness. It throws demands and challenges at the paddler at every turn. It evokes the full ambit of human emotions. Emotions that make it such a classic event. It is the sense of confronting the challenge, dealing with adversity, defying the odds and conquering the elements and of course the achievement of completing this race that brings paddlers from all corners of the country and indeed all corners of the world back year after year to the beauty and warm hospitality of the people of Craddock. A new record entry of over 1,750 paddlers converged on Craddock for the 2005 Hunter Parade Fish, a K1 event hosting the SA K1 River Champs once again. For some, the week started with some unplanned admin with boat repairs from recce trips that went wrong dominating their pre-race preparations. Leaving all is a problem, you know, I've got to ask my wife and uh, that's, that's, that's quite a problem sometimes, but uh, she, she, gave us, she gave us a bit of leave uh, for this thing and, and we always make sure we, we take leave. You know, this time of the year, yeah. <laughs> the organization is driven by the Fish River Canoe Club and scores of locals, creating a well-oiled and friendly machine that runs the race superbly. The atmosphere is special at the race base at the Marlow Agricultural School. There's a buzzing beer garden, which somehow is busy both day and night. And of course, at mealtimes, you get plenty of traditional Karoo fare as well. The start at Grass Ridge Dam early on the Friday morning. Traffic pouring into the start area along the dusty local farmers' roads. And then, with the nerves jangling, it's time for those final last-minute preparations. Into its 24th year, the Hunter Powerade Fish is recognized as one of the world's greatest river marathons. And like so many good things, it just keeps getting better. A new record field of over 1,750 paddlers has assembled here at Grass Ridge Dam. It's the start of day one, 46 kilometers and 10 kilometers into it, the crucial Keith's flyover. A fantastically competitive field with Len Jenkins and Abby Liedemer, the two clear favorites in the men's and the women's sections, but a very strong international contingent has assembled as well to give them a good run for their money. As for the rest of the boys and girls, are they feeling nervous? You betcha. The race is always important for the elite paddlers and doubly so this year as it is hosting the SAK1 River Champs. Some of the top local marathoners were absent as the World Marathon Champs were just two weeks away, but once again a star-studded international team had been flown in by the sponsors. Of the five visiting internationals, David Knebel from the Czech Republic is here. How are you feeling? Um, I'm feeling very exciting because of the race. Uh, it's looking hard, but I think uh, we've all done it, hopefully. Flying the flag for Australia is Ben Mercer. How are you feeling on race day? Yeah, good, excited. Can't wait to get going. Been uh, looking forward to it all week and uh, it's a beautiful day. Looks great. Just a great buzz around the, the place. Heaps of competitors, so really looking forward to it. Abs, race day is here. Uh, you're sitting pretty. Everybody's saying you're the girl to beat. Um, I'd like to believe that, but it's a river and the river's a river and anything can happen. Is that your strategy for the day? You're out to race yourself against the river? Yes, I think you've always got to race like that on this, this race and um, you can't really worry too much about other people and um, even the top guys should race like that and hopefully you'll come off best. It's not often that this race starts with a clear favorite but having won it in 2001 and 2003 and sizing up the hat-trick Len Jenkins is clearly the man to beat at the moment and Len looking more relaxed and more chilled than I've seen in many years. Yes Dave, well there is a lot of pressure on me so I'm trying to deal with it quite nicely and um, three in a row is quite a big um, thing to do um, so I'm just going to take it uh, easy, try not to fall out, stick to basics and hopefully have a clean, clean day. So day one of the race, one kilometre longer than it was last year, starts at Grass Ridge Dam, then onto the river, down to Toast Rack Low Level Bridge, Keats Flyover, then the paddlers are going to negotiate the long flats, they come up to Cut Corp Weir, all the way down to the new finish. The new finish is located just below the Nutsford Bridge. 
the start at Grass Ridge Dam. It's a Lamar start as usual. The paddlers having to run down to their kayaks which are waiting in the shallow water. They then drag them out into the dam and then head out to deep water out to a turning buoy with the leaders jostling with one another for one of those precious places on the wave in the front bunch. They turn at the buoy and then head down to the dam wall which is a critical portage. It's about a kilometre long and it sorts out the A-batch dramatically. Every paddler with dreams of glory has got to stay in contact here. As they put into the river, three boats are together. First, Len Jenkins, who won the race here in 2001 and 2003, the defending K1 champion. He's first onto the river, and as he is back to his best at the moment, there's no stopping Len. You give him a sniff of the lead, and he simply puts his foot down. The chasers are Barry Learn and Clint Pretorius, but as Len Jenkins heads towards Toast Rack, he's already got a substantial lead. No mistakes going through Toast Rack for Len, who's one of the seasoned river pros. Learn and Clint Pretorius under Toast Rack right behind him. 45 minutes in, in the willows lies Keats Flyover. Nine kilometers into the race, Keats Flyover. And this is Keats Flyover, the concrete bridge built by Keith College here many years ago. This is a colored farm, but the rapid is nasty. Four key sections. Section one, you've got to go down the right. You've got to be under the willow trees and you've got to avoid the heavy water. Otherwise, there are three big stoppers that will stop you dead. Section two, under the bridge, a big lateral. You've got to get into that right lateral. It will rush you from river right to river left. And you've got to make sure you don't touch the left hand bank. Section three, this is the fun. There's a big hole three quarters of the way down formed by a rocky ledge. A lot of paddlers will be chicken of this and try and stay left. You've got to hit the hole dead center because you need to exit on river right. And section four, as you exit, a whole series of wave trains. If you've made it through the first three sections, section four is easy. But if you're swimming, that's what's going to give you a pounding. Keats is what it's all about. Coming into Keats, Len Jenkins has a one minute lead by the time he gets into the approaches. He was a bundle of nerves because the day before the race, he had taken a nasty swim through this rapid while practicing his lines. Let's watch the little maestro in action. Cuts the lateral under the bridge perfectly. Lines up the big hole at the bottom. No boats around him. That's the privilege of being the race leader. Hits the big wave square on. Cap comes off, but the big man is in charge. The chasing group, Barry Lewin coming through first. Just behind him, Clint Pretorius, the two mates from Varsity College in Durban. Barry Lewin under the lateral OK, Clint Pretorius behind him negotiates it in a slightly more central line. But action now for Barry Lewin, he hits the big wave, tail walks out of the bottom there, the nose gets squirted to the left. Can he keep it together? There's a chance for Clint Pretorius to take second. Lewin spins around in the big wave, the first of the wave train, he's clear. In the rest of A batch, there's swimmers, there's Love Day Zombie taking a swim the whole way down Keats. He's not going to forget that in a hurry. There's never a dull moment for the spectators. They've been using the new road that's been built here by the locals to ensure that they can get a chance to watch all the action at Keats flyover. Now the women's race, Abby Miedema is portaging it, and here comes the visiting Czech international, Misha Stradanova, beautifully through the middle hole. She's a little bit to the left, listen to her shriek. She's having to spin around in the middle of Keats flyover, but look at her wild water international racing pedigree coming to the fore. Keeping her act together, keeping a cool head, she spins around, and this dramatic line through Keats has pumped her into the lead. The second of the ladies to try their luck in Keats, most of them had opted to portage it, is Carol Joyce from Gauteng. She hits the rocks on the left, not a good place to be. She tries to get back into the river, but she's over. And this is going to be a nasty swim. She's going to swim most of the worst of the rapid. Look at her, gets the technique right, hangs onto the boat, hangs onto the paddle, and then just hopes for the best. And everything should come out of the bottom in one piece. The brightly colored hairdos from the Varsities. Here's our camera boat showing how not to do it. Up on the left, into the wave. Far from ideal, many people are going to opt to portage this, but behind them, there's Carnage in Keats. Len Jenkins, meantime, is simply pulling away from the chasing group. Here he comes into the portage around the bridge, elegantly slides up onto the grass. A quick portage, he is so quick running with the boat. Slides back into the river while the chasers are desperately trying to use this as an opportunity to try and roll some time in. Otter entry back into the river. This is Len at his best. Wow. 
Soap Punch Drift Rapid about 90 minutes into the first stage. Len Jenkins had about a two minutes lead going through Keats Flyover. Can he negotiate Soap Punch Drift Weir and about 300 meters of Soap Punch Drift Rapid and hang on to that handy advantage? Second boat through Soap Punch Drift Bridge is Clint Pretorius. This rapid a little different this year with the bridge having been cleared and the rocky island immediately below the bridge having gone. Barry Lewin, his mate from Durban, just behind him. You'll see these two still in contact and they're trying to work together as much as possible to try and reel in Len Jenkins. Also in the chase right now, Paul Maria from the Western Cape, paddling very comfortably. And the ladies' leader, Abby Niedema, making it look deceptively easy as she comes under the bridge at Soap Punch and negotiates her way down the rapid. Abby had retaken the lead about 20 minutes above Soap Punts from Misha Stradanova, who as a wild water pro is used to racing 20 minutes at a time. Now about an hour and 45 into the race, she's beginning to take strain. Third place goes to Pettenberg Bay's Michelle Eder. For most of the paddlers, Soap Punts Drift Rapid is just a long succession of festive waves. If you've made it this far, then Soap Punts is just fun. Nou zit ik daar lekker te zwemmen hier in het vuur. Die water is rof, joh. Weir is the last portage of the first stage and it's a welcome chance to stretch your legs before the last 45 minute haul into the overnight stock. One man who's really enjoying the race is doing so because he scooped former fish champ Mark Perro as his partner. Absolutely, I think that's wonderful. The drivers is Mark Perro, I can't go wrong, good water, full water, full water, lekker. Fantastic, no problems, we're just enjoying ourselves and uh, good weather, good water, having, having a lot of fun. The new finish is one kilometre downstream from the old stop at Nutsford Bridge and it's a fantastic new site. Len Jenkins crossing the line a bit bewildered because he didn't know the finish had moved. Day one and a very comfortable victory for Len Jenkins. Len, it really doesn't look like it could have gone any better for you today. Yeah, normally um, there's one or two problems during a race and today was a good day. I had a clean run, no problems at all. Um, yesterday I had a, a bad encounter at one of the big rapids and I ended up falling out. And um, Today I got it right and uh, you can be the best paddle in the world and swim and lose the race and luckily I just kept my cool and got down the rapid around. Uh, Keys is always exciting, there's plenty of water in this yeah. river and it gets really narrow there. Um, you go, I was fine through most of it, uh, through underneath the bridge was fine, I just did a nice little tail walk coming out of the main stopper which made my heart murmur a little bit and did a little spin but I uh, managed to hold it together, managed to spin around again and get going quite quickly. Tell us about the rest of the day. That left you in third. Clint overtook you there. Uh, Clint had a really good line through Keith and got 50, 60 meters on me. I managed to close that down over the course of the next hour and caught him at one of the portages. And then we worked together most of the way towards the end here. It was really nice having someone with me on the flats at the end. Unfortunately, Len is just too strong. And in a river like this, like, it's just potent. Abby Miedema had fought her way back to the front of the women's race and a handy four-minute lead. And congratulations, it wasn't the easiest day in the world. Tell us how it panned out. Um, didn't have such a great start and um, Meshka got away across the dam. Michelle and I tried to catch up to her but we just were maintaining the distance. Um, had a fairly decent dam or portage, felt a hell of a hard, <laughs> but, um, but managed to get slightly ahead. I decided to portage Keats just because I was ahead, I wasn't sure what the gap was. Um, and as I was putting in, she came screaming past me, so she obviously had a beautiful line through it. And um, then I kind of battled to catch her a little bit, distance maintained, and at prospect I managed to get a little bit of a gap on her. Misha, well done. Uh, was it a good day? Uh, yeah, I'm satisfied with the result because I used to do uh, shorter races, about 15 minutes. Yeah. And uh, I'm very satisfied because I uh, did very well at top section. And another former fish champ, Graham Bird, leading home the batch, dicing for seven.
A beautiful bright and sunny Karoo morning greets the peddlers for the start of day two of the Hansa Parade Fish. 36 kilometers into the finishing credit, the first half with some gently rolling rapids. In the second half of the course, three weirs. The first, the new gauging weir, which will be an unknown for many of the paddlers. Expect some sport there. The Marlow shoot, which is great fun. And then five kilometers from the finish, the 10 foot high Craddock weir that has had a strange knack of deciding the outcome of the titles in this year's race. The two favorites start with four minute leads, Abby Miedema and Len Jenkins. Then Jenkins sets off with a hat-trick in his sights, going into the shorter final stage. He's also thinking about the prospect of being the first K1 paddler to complete this race in less than five hours. The chasing group, Clint Pretorius and Barry Lewin, set off in hot pursuit. And also in elapsed time, Abby Miedema leading the women's race by four minutes from Misha Stradanova. Right at the start of day two, just a few hundred meters from the start, is the portage around Baroda Weir. Here the Czech female paddler Misha Stradanova negotiates her way down the steep wall on the right hand side. Using some knowledge from the paddlers around her gets back into the river and sets off in hot pursuit of women's leader Abby Miedema. Day two, the river is wider and has got these long rolling rapids that the paddlers love. Abby Miedema putting her ears back knowing that she has to at least keep that four minute buffer between herself and Misha Stradanova while Len Jenkins powers his way off. Looking at that sub five hour mark for the first time as he goes under Baroda Bridge. The boat speed that Len Jenkins generates is deceptive if you concentrate on his relaxed and loping style. He's actually going at record breaking pace. Baroda Bridge about 35 minutes into the second stage. Len Jenkins still paddling alone. The chasing group is still together. The gap between them is still four and a half minutes so they're not making much headway. There's Barry Lewin and Clint Pretorius doing their best to try and reel in Len Jenkins. The bunch racing for fourth place has seen some changes. Greg Bartho with the hairdo has been caught with his older brother Daryl on his left storming through the field. Gauging weir. This weir was boldly rebuilt by the Department of Water Affairs during the winter so it is something of an unknown. Let's see how Len Jenkins handles it. Cool, calm at a slight angle. He bounces through the choppy water. A quick smile to his seconds who are giving him splits. And here's the bunch chasing. Clint Pretorius leading the way. He keeps it nice and straight, manages it okay. And Barry Lewin just behind him, also safely down. He has to put a quick brace to the left to make sure that he stays with Clint and the pair can try and hunt down Len Jenkins. Women's race leader, Abby Miedema, her first time going down, gauging weir during the race. No troubles at all. She really is quite at home in rough water. Misha Stradanova still trying to hunt down the four and a half minute gap. She's a pro in wild water, so this weir posed absolutely no problems with her. And third place, Michelle Eray takes a goof. For the rest of the field, the new gauging weir provided plenty of action. Awesome, having a great day. You know, wonderful little fish. My boat will stay in one piece, I might even finish it. Craddock Weir, five kilometers from the finish. Len Jenkins well clear as he approaches the 10 foot drop. It's all balance and control and composure. He makes it look way too easy. The race for second and third. Barry Lewin, the first down Craddock Weir, he handles the fine. Clint Pretorius right behind him, takes it slightly squarer. He gets pushed into the eddy on the left and Lewin is able to take off. And here's the women's race leader, Abby Miedema. She's worked hard to get a handy advantage, so she has the luxury of being able to portage Craddock Weir, not taking any risks at this stage in the game. You can see the nerves jangling as Abs heads downstream. And Abs' right-hand man, Martin Dreyer, takes it a little bit too straight, but he keeps it together, stays with the program, smile for the lifesavers, and he's off. And just behind Drea, Ryan Cousins pops in to visit the crayfish. From Craddock, it's about a 20 minute paddle through the golf course rapids to the finish. But let's go back upriver for a while and check out what's happening at Marlow Shoot. Awesome. Just open. Just out to the 
And let's watch the Fish and Chippers versus Craddock Weir. The friendly town of Craddock and the finish at the sports grounds awaits the arrival of the 1,750 plus paddlers on a balmy Karoo morning. And all the applause is for Len Jenkins. He scoops the hat trick, he scoops the race record by 45 seconds, and he breaks the five hours barrier by 30 seconds. I managed not to make any mistakes at any of the weirs. Um, at the rapids, I managed to stay in my boat. And that, I think, is the most important thing about this race, is to keep it, keep in your boat and not make any mistakes. Uh, yesterday, I, I didn't even think about the record. Um, I actually went out really easy. And uh, if I got the record, it's just a bonus. I, I wasn't concentrating on the record at all. Just went to go and do a good race. Nearly six minutes back, Pretorius and Lewin have finished their dice for the silver. He did take out his minutes on us in the beginning. And uh, then our seconds told us that we, after a while, we started gaining another minute. So we were catching a little bit in the beginning, and towards the halfway and the end. But uh, we just we concentrated on staying ahead of Dale Bath and Brett in that, because we just were getting our splits between them, and we just worked well together. And it was like a good race. Uh, coming to the finish, you worked together basically for two days. How did you decide who's second, who's third? What is it? Uh, there's male pride involved there. We raced it all the way to the line. Um, it's really nice having a good mate like Clint um, as company along the way. Um, we're both part of the, we go to the same varsity, varsity college. This also fits in with nicely with the inter-varsity that runs through the fish. And um, we've had some good points in the varsity competition with a second and a third. The women's title goes to Abby Niedema, breaking Alexa Lombard's K1 mark by an unheard of six minutes. It was great. Um, had a, a really good day. It's nice starting at that time. You kind of have clear water and you can choose your line down the rapids. Um, paddled quite hard. It is slightly shorter, so you can. And yeah, just fantastic. The only person second place will be able to catch you today? Um, she's a very strong paddler. I was very impressed with the way she went yesterday. And um, because we were allowed a ride wave, I wasn't sure who was behind me and who she could sit with. So it was a concern. But um, as long as I felt I was going my hardest, there was obviously nothing more I could really do. So that brings down the curtain on the 2005 Hunter Powerade Fish, a truly remarkable race with both the men's and women's records falling in really quite different fashion. Remarkable also for the 1,760 odd paddlers that enjoyed the fantastic water. All that remains then is to hand over the spoils to the winners. A sub five hours for Lynn Jenkins and two pairs of brothers in the top ten in the Barthos and Ryan and Greg Lowe from the Eastern Cape. As for the women, Abby Niedema taking the crown that has eluded her and their three under 21s making it into the top ten of the women's competition. Day one hinges on two key portages. After some thrills on the way out of Peter Maritzburg, the Campbell's Farm